his side so nearly fell to this Neil McDonald sucker punch in the second minute. Moments later, the visitors stunned the 20,000 fans when Burke's free kick led to Alan Pardew finding the United net. But to Newcastle's relief, referee Brian Hill chalked it up for pushing. The goal that did count, though, was one of St James's greatest ever. Having set his sights from fully 30 yards, Paul Gascoigne's shot left Palace keeper Wood for dead. The celebrations were a bit special, too. After the interval, it was Palace who took up the running, only for young Newcastle keeper Gary Kelly to confirm his growing reputation with some fine saves. This one from Thomas. The visitors' best chance should have produced an equaliser for Neil Redfern. But he blasted wide, and from then on, the second division pace setters were decidedly second best. Gascoigne led the charge, and Paul Goddard's cross provided the ammunition for teenage striker Michael O'Neill to score his first for United. And it's quickly he ducked out. Gascoigne was by now playing like a man inspired, and with five minutes left, he so nearly added a second memorable goal. O'Neill then had the opportunity to make amends for his miss. Goddard's death flick set him up, but Wood was well positioned. Neil McDonald was next to warm Wood's hands, but a super shot produced an equally good save. John Cornwall was the last to try and give the scoreline a more emphatic look. His last minute ever hit the heights, but not in the way he'd have wished. 1-0 to Newcastle, the final score. But Paul Gascoigne, a very special player, had given the fans a moment of magic they'll never forget. Two. So, holders who spent five months in exile behind the goal. They felt it had a basic design fault. The roof didn't cover all the seats. And it's not much fun sitting in driving sleet. But some people loved it. Mirandinia's sons, the mascots for the day, had never seen this funny white stuff before. For the players, it was soon obvious that conditions were a major problem. Goddard tried to turn them to his advantage, but couldn't slide the ball in. But Newcastle could never be accused of being predictable. When other teams would have thumped it, they decided to play football. Unfortunately, Anderson couldn't find his onrushing forwards with the cross. Mirandinia's amigo Ozzy Ardiles helped him out here, but keeper Tony Parks and company stood firm to block his route to goal. Neil McDonald for once seemed happy in midfield. This thundering drive nearly brought the house down, not to mention Parks' crossbar. With half an hour gone, Newcastle got their reward for an excellent spell of pressure. Aaron Jackson the supplier, and Paul Gascoigne sweeps Newcastle into the lead. If Gazza was on the stock market, his share price would be booming. It was dividend time for the fans though, as another mirror flick found Goddard, but he curled his shot just wide. Chris Waddle was hardly worth a jeer in all this, but he did manage one turn and shot just before half-time. In fact, it was the fans' new favourite, Gascoigne, who looked the England player. More superb control, but Parks kept him out. Not for long, though. 56 minutes gone, and Gascoigne finishes off the free kick. A deflection, maybe, but there's just no stopping him in this mood. But Newcastle should have had more. Peter Jackson was in on the act, but he was another one who found the crossbar. Spurs rallied too late. Waddle smacked in a shot, but the woodwork was in fine form. He tried again a minute from time, but young Gary Kelly is proving a very established stand-in. And anyway, it was a day for the new hero, not the old, and Gascoigne's contract was more important than a seat in the rain. I think it's four, good, uh, four games, I'm really pleased. I think it's more to do with uh, my...